نهار اللي رحت انا لهوني كان صار له يمكن فارس وزياد شي كل واحد شي ثلاث ايام اربع ايام مش نايمين. ما في نوم ابدا ابدا. في الجمعة. المهم انبسط فارس في قال لي خي جيت هسه انبسطت فيك، تعال خبرني خبريات، تعال اطلع انا وياك بدنا نطلع ننام بأوضة فوق بمدرسة مركزية بس ما في ولا شيء فيها يعني كله عسكر تحت. آخر غرفة قال لي ما حدا بيزعجني لأنه ما حدا بيجي لهون لأنه هاي لا فيها دشم ولا فيها شيء. شقة مفروشة. ايه شقة مفروشة. المهم هسه هالقصف بو ضاع ضرب ما تشوف إلا هالقزاز عم ينزل، ما تشوف إلا بواب تطير ما بعرف شو. لك يا فارس نحن طب متلاجئين على هاي الأوضة اللي هون، فارس ما صار عم يحكي مش مش فارس، اللي عم يحكي النوم تبعه. اه. قلت له يا فارس طب هالقصف كثير قريب صار يعني عم يجي. شو في فوقنا دشم يعني؟ قال لي الله مدشم فوق منا ما في شيء طلعت قلت له يا يكون انزل من هون ليه؟ نحن قاعدين هون جيت موتنا تقتلنا هون قوم انزل مش قال لي انزل انت انا ما بدي انا انا ما ضليت نايم انا فضلت القزاز تكسر او نزل على التخت اللي انا نايم نزل القزاز علي وما كانش ينزل هو شو؟ ما هو المحل الوحيد اللي ما حدا ما بتعرف شو ايه ما فوق وزياد كان زياد بهي هذيك المنطقه بتعرف اليوم كان الطريق الوحيد اللي لما يصيروا يتصورونا مش من طريق الكرام الطريق الثاني من مجدية When I got to know Ziad, I thought that he was a writer. But I found out that he was writing down his memoirs. When he reached the period of the civil war, he stopped writing. I wondered why. I didn't know much about Ziad's role in the Lebanese civil war, but I gathered that his memories were too painful. I had just noticed some little strange things with Ziad. For example, that he liked to sleep during the day and be awake at night and he frequently complained about suffering from a strange noise in his ears. I had fallen in love with Ziad because of his humor. He could be sensitive, but also very stubborn. He was always there when I needed him. I found him good looking and he was a good dancer. In 2003, we got married. Ziad and I met during a demonstration. 
I had come to Lebanon 10 years ago as a journalist. I immediately felt the vibes between Beirut and Berlin, the city where I had been living in before. In Berlin, I was dancing to techno rhythms in a former shelter from the Second World War. In Beirut, I was dancing techno in a place where a massacre had happened during the Civil War. In Berlin and in Beirut, I was dancing with the shadows of the past. Berlin had been the place where I had felt at ease. But Beirut's complexities and contradictions fascinated me. I didn't know at that time that the Lebanese were still playing with fire and that I would soon become part of this collective dance on fire. Whenever I drove around Lebanon with Ziad, he told me bits and pieces about his experiences in the war. A battle here, a fight there. Little by little, I tried to assemble the pieces of this complicated mosaic. Actually, my feeling is about this road exactly. It returned me so many years back. I was, uh, I think I was 17 years old when I came to here. The first time I come to the, by this road, this area, it was the first time to me to be in the south as a fighter. So I remember that uh, I was just a big child. You can say that 17 years old. I was coming to have a big responsibility to be the military commander of the Communist Party in this area. When I asked Ziad if we could film in Khiam, he refused. The South no longer belonged to the national resistance, which had been Ziad's cause in the 1970s and 80s. It now belongs to Hezbollah. Finally, I convinced him to go. We arrived to Khiam prison, where one of Ziad's important battles had taken place. When we entered the site, he didn't want me to film any flags. Not because the flags belonged to a certain party. He didn't want any flags to be in the film except for the Lebanese flag. But well, for me, the flags are there. They are part of reality. The training we get in the Soviet Union is about almost all kinds of weapons. We trained with different guns, rockets and tanks, and we learned about different operation tactics. I still know, of course. It's the same as a language. If you don't use it, you will forget it. But uh, when you put yourself in a certain uh, circumstances, you will remember it and uh, you, you can use it. This is the war. From here, we got inside the military base of Saad Haddad army in 1976. The success of the operation depended on a trick. We sent some small troops to simulate an attack on Marjayoun. Most of the soldiers, they were here in this military base. They went to protect, uh, to help Marjayoun to protect this area. They arrived to here almost 15 to 1. Their duty is to come to Derdara. Here you can see we exploded this uh, wall and we go inside, we went inside uh, from this place. All the operation lasted for 15 minutes only, from when we started to shoot until we controlled the military base and all of Al Khiam city. 
I was almost 18 years old. I was a command of this battle, and I, I put also the plan. And the, who share in this battle? It's almost 500 soldiers. It was the biggest, uh, actually, uh, battle uh, during my life, uh, uh, military life, that I uh, I was the leader of this quantity at once in the same battle. Uh, uh, from our side, actually, no one get killed. No one. When Ziad was a teenager, the Palestinian fighters impressed him. Because of their cause, he started to get military training at the age of 14. However, at that time, he didn't think that the Palestinian presence was one of the main factors that generated the war in Lebanon. The Palestinian cause wasn't Ziad's only motivation to having become a military commander. Above all, he was an ardent communist. The place I was living in was people who were not in Syria. I mean, I can say that. And in the end, the situation of the army is the army on the country and the feeling that they are not standing in a country. وبالتالي عم بيطمحوا ليكون في عندهم وطن يحقق لهم طموحاتهم الحد الادنى التعليميه والفرص العمل والشغل بكرامه فكان اسهل بكثير انه هاو الشباب اللي موجودين بهالمنطقه انه ينجذبوا للحرب الاهليه في عندنا نموذج او قوه مثال هو الاتحاد السوفيتي كنموذج كانوا خبرونا عن مستوى العدالة الاجتماعية اللا بطالة المتوفرة اللي موجودة فيه إنه ما في ناس بلا عمل فرص العمل اللي بأمنى هل أدي الحدود اللي كانوا عم نطمح إنه يكون بلدنا يكون عنده عنده قدرة إنه يحتزي بهذا النموذج إنه يكون في إمكانية فرص عمل إمكانية حياة كريمة، إمكانية طبابة، إمكانية استشفاء، إمكانية تعليم. الحلم كان بالتغيير كان حلم كبير. يعني هذا الحلم لم يتحقق. بالحقيقة أنتجت الحرب كمية ضحايا وتدمر الحلم. زياد had grown up in a poor family that came from the mountains. Nine children and two adults had to share two rooms. There was never enough money. As a child, Ziad had to work in order to contribute to the family's income. For sure, the poverty Ziad had experienced as a child was one of the major reasons why he joined the Communist Party. <laughs> Most of us were uh, sleeping next to each other in, uh, on the floor because there is no places uh, enough for us to have beds, uh, independent beds yani, for us. So the old brothers, they have to sleep on the sofa and we, have, we used to live uh, to sleep in, uh, on the floor, uh, the rest, four of us, me, Adil, Walid and Majid. Uh, it was hard life. But the poverty doesn't explain why he became a fighter. His brothers had normal jobs except for him. Since uh, 75 until, uh, until uh, 77, until 77, I saw them maybe three, four times. All the, the rest, I didn't see them. ما سألت زياد وينه؟ <تصفيق> يعني بهيدا الوقت يعني وقت بلش الهرب الأخلية ما سألته وينه شو بيعمل؟ وين راح؟ بلا بعرف أنا بعرف وينه وكل المراكز اللي ياخذها هو يروح على البقاع على حصفية على جنوب على كذا بعرف أنا تفقد يعني وين راح وين إجا وين كذا بعرف بعرف بس مش طالع بيدي شيء انا طالع بيدي شيء لا لا هيك صار
just once he went uh, behind me uh, in Naba when we were in Naba. Yeah, Naba, did we like that? And Tirah to Raya. Yeah, we were in Naba. موقع القيادة اللي لعبته ببداية الحرب هي صدفة أكثر ما هي قرار ذاتي صدفة شوي مضحكة يعني أنا مثل ما أنك شايفي شوي طويل و... فكنت بمتاز عن غيري من رفقة رفقاتي اللي بنفس العمر أنه أنا أطول منهم أكبر منهم بالجسم على الأقل وكانوا بحاجة لناس عند عندها عضلات مش مش مهم قديش كمية التفكير يعني وإن كانت تلعب دور بس المهم المشهد الخارجي هاي المشهد أهلني لألعب هيدا هيدا الدور إضافة إلى تجربة السابقة بالربطة الطلابية ب بأحدى السنويات سنوية برج حمود الرسمية كنت بالربطة الطلابية انتقلت معي مسؤولية القيادة الطلابية لهالسنوية للعمل العسكري وبالتالي حطيت فجأة برغبة أو بدون رغبة بموقع المسؤولية فهذه كفت هذه كانت الانطلاقة واللي بصير واحد مسؤول بموقع عمليا بصير يطمح لانه يترقى بهذا الموقع خاصه اذا كان عم بيوجد المبررات والتفسيرات اللي بتاكد اهميه وبتاكد حق صوابيه اللي عم بيشتغلوا فبصير يسعى لانه يتطور فهي كفت معي الى خلص الحرب Before I knew much about Ziad's past, a friend once told me that Ziad was a national hero. But I wondered why someone would become involved in a war voluntarily. I simply couldn't understand this. I find it absurd. I find wars absurd. <laughs> دورنا على على ناس عن جد قتلوا بالحرب على على مقاتلين قدام كانوا عم بخبرونا هيك عن شو كانوا يحسوا وقت ما ينزلوا على الارض ببلشوا يقاتلوا ويلبسوا البدله ويحملوا سلاح بتسمع اخبار كثير في ناس بتخبرك عن انه وقفه الشارع قد هي مهمه لما تحمل السلاح ما حدا بيسترجع يحكي معك بتحسي حالك انه الدنيا كلها و... وهيك بس الفكره انه في في ناس معينين في مقاتلين كانوا عم بحاربوا عن جد عن قضية عن عن مبادئ عن كان بفكرهم انه هيدي هي الطريقة الوحيدة اللي هي حتوصلهم ل لحققوا المبادئ وال وال والقيم اللي بي اللي بيأمنوا فيها والايديولوجيا تبعت الحزب اللي عم بيقتلوا فيه على فكرة تتعرف قد ايش جذابة فكرة الثياب العسكرية هيدا البنطلون شريته عند اشن دام انه يعني هلا حتى عند ايش قدام بتلاقي بناطلين عسكريه بقى ما هلا تقول شيء ولذيذ يعني بكره بالحر اذا في حرب جايه ماشي الشباب ما بيضيعوا وين ما كان باي محل بتلاقي تياب عسكريه لذيذ ما هي كول I try to find out more about Ziad's past in order to understand what kind of person he must have been during the time of the Lebanese civil war There was one person I could ask more about Ziad's life during the war, his former wife, Muna. She had been his companion during the entire war period. Maybe she could tell me more about this mysterious time. عن هياته بالحرب رفيق زياد <تصفيق> <تصفيق> و لحالة ما عم بيحكي كتير تفاصيل يعني وكنت بدي أعرف كيف كان الحياة بالحرب وهيك 
الحياة قاعدة يعني كمان ما رح يفرق. حياتك كمان كيف حياتي كيف؟ انا قديش عندك استعداد تسمعي الحقيقة ما بعرف هيدا شغلة ما بعرف ممكن تسمعي تفاصيل تزعجك يعني مم. انا اكيد كل شيء سمعتي عن زياد بوزيتيف يمكن تسمعي اشياء نيجاتيف مني مم. انا بقرار الزواج كان يعني مع انه انا كنت صغيرة كان هو كثير اوعى مني كان عم بيقول لي انتبهي نحن عم ناخذ قرار انه انا هي حياتي يمكن بكره موت يمكن ما اقدر كون بالبيت كل الوقت يمكن يمكن ايه ابو اذا معلم انا بحبك وبتحمل وانا اصلا مقتنعه و... وهيدا الشيء اللي انت عم بتعمله بحياتك هيدا النضال ما انا كمان عم بعمله ومقتنعه فيه تحملت مسؤوليه كلمتي 20 سنه لانه هو ما كان بالبيت ما قدر يتواجد بالبيت لاسباب كثيره اولا امنيه يعني كشخص كان مطلوب من اكثر من جهه يعني من جهه حزبيه بلبنان كان مطلوب ومن اسرائيل كان مطلوب فكنا على طول عايشين بقلق كل الوقت يعني انا شخصيا عايشه بقلق ولا مره كنت خبره لانه كنت اقول ما انا قلت له انا موافقه اوقات طبعا كنت يعني عبر عن هيدا الشيء بطريقه هيك بس ولا مره اثرت على علاقتنا يعني انا وزياد ما بتذكر صار في مشاكل بيناتنا كل الحرب ابدا يعني كان على طول لانه لما يجي انا ناطرته ليجي فلما يجي بكون مش مصدقه يعني انه هو اجى يكون جرب مأمنه كل شيء وكان يجي فجأة لأنه حتى ما لازم أعرف أنا أنت هو جاي على البيت And Ziad went off to another battle In September 1980 the communists had taken over an old crusaders castle a very strategic point they had a fierce battle against the Israelis, who attacked them by tanks and bombed them by airplanes. Many of Ziad's comrades got killed. I was born in the first place in the war against the Israelis. Not before 1989, and not after this history. سنة 80 ب 19 آه صار في عملية عسكرية إسرائيلية بمحيط قلعة أرنون وعلى قلعة أرنون بمحاولة الاستيلاء عليها. القتال استمر من ليلة 18 آب 19 آب حتى الصبح وما تمكنوا الإسرائيليين إنه يحتلوا القلعة بسبب قتال كان شرس دائر وتكبدوا خسائر كثير كبيرة. اضطروا انه يعملوا لاول مره بتاريخ الجيش الاسرائيلي يعمل قصف تخليص ارواح بالعلم العسكري بنقول قصف تخليص ارواح يعني القصف على مناطق متواجدين فيها قواتهم وقواتنا لحتى يتمكن من سحبهم بنفس الوقت اغار على القلعه بالطيران الحربي كانت الوسيلة الوحيدة لإسكات مدافع الرشاشة للمقاتلين بقلب بقلب القلعة. استشهد عدد لا بأس فيه يعني بيناتهم ناس أفراد يعني أصحاب لإلي. لحد هلا بعتقد إنه وقت اللي بنقول أرنون يعني مرتبطة فيهم يعني بس قول تذكر قلعة أرنون بتذكرهم لإلهم. بأحد المرات نحن عم نحاول نسحب الجثث أغار الطيران علينا بصدفة كنا قراب من الكهف اللي موجود هونيك من القلعة قدرنا نفوت بقلبه وأغار الطيران علينا يعني كمان بصدفة إنه بينا طيبين so I was expecting something emotional from you why, why you were not so emotional 
You know, uh, we are speaking about something happened since 32 years. It's not yesterday. It's from long time. So anyway, uh, this feeling about uh, the death um, in the beginning of the war, it was different. Yani every time we hear or we know that someone uh, get killed, got killed, um, we feel so sad. And uh, after after a couple of years, we start to feel as um, uh, we used to uh, to uh, live with uh, the ideas of uh, death. So we used to uh, to hear almost every couple of days one of us, one one anyone uh, got killed. Did you ever feel guilty that uh, your friends died but you survived? Do you ever have this feeling of guilt? No, because usually I didn't order them to do anything. I can't do it. And usually I was sharing with them in all this position and in all these places, dangerous places. Um, so it's there is some people they will die, and uh, some like me they're still alive. So why? I was very close to to die, but it uh, didn't happen. So I don't feel guilty, you know. I feel sorry, yes, but I don't feel guilty. In the same year of the before battle, Ziad's first child was born, a girl named Tamara. لما ولدت لتمارا كانت خطرة شوي لحالة الولادة عندي فطلب الحكيم بده جوزة يمضي عوراء على مسؤوليته بده عمل سيزاريان ما بده ولد طبيعي طبعا كل أهلي حدي و... بس بده زوجة يكون موجود لأنه حالتي خطرة بهداك الوقت كان في معارك بالجنوب بين معارك داخلية بين أحزاب وزياد كان مضطر يكون موجود بالمعارك بالجنوب بعت لي شاب من المركز مضى باسمه انه هو زوجي وعلى مسؤوليته اذا انا بصير لي شيء فانا طبعا انا عم بفوت على غرفه العمليات اطلعت بهذا الشاب هيك قلت له وين زياد؟ قال مش قادر يجي اوكي ولدت غبت عن الوعي ثلاث ايام يمكن كانت سبب اساسي انه عملت عندي جوا هيك ردة فعل انه انه ليه ما اجى يعني انه ليه هو ما يكون حدي بس ما قلت ما حكيت ما حكيت لانه انا واعده انه انا عارفه هيك بعدين ثلاث ايام انا غايبه عن الوعي وزياد كمان مش حدي يعني مش انه اجى حتى التليفونات ما كان في يعني ما كانت متوفرة كتير بجنوب يمكن اجاني بوكيات ورد على المستشفى قد ما بدك من ابو عمار وصلت بوكي ورد يعني بس انا ما كان بدي البوكي الورد تبعت ابو عمار <تصفيق> انه كانوا هونوا علي ليكي شو اجاك ورد من امين عام حزب فلان رئيس فلان كنت اقول لهم وين زياد يعني لما بتكوني انت بلحظه ضعف بيكون بدك الشخص اللي بتحبيه In July 2006 Israel fought a war against Hezbollah. I was pregnant with Carla, spending my summer vacation in Germany with my parents. Ziad was in Beirut. I was watching CNN all the time, seeing Israel bombing Lebanon. I was worried about Ziad. Being pregnant, I wanted to be with him, not with anyone else. And I wanted to go back to Lebanon as a reporter. But it was too dangerous, so I stayed. I think that I never cried as much as during these 33 days of war out of fear and frustration. On the other hand, the baby growing inside my belly seemed to have a guardian angel. 
we were in a safe place. If the war had dragged on much longer, Ziad would have missed the birth of his third child, Carla. On the 12th of November of 2006, Carla was born in a Beirut hospital. This time, Ziad was there. He took this amazing picture of Carla seconds after she had come out of my belly. sofa and always the fucking TV on always all day long all day long the TV and the stupid old sofa I want to throw it I was thinking for our film to make a scene about this fucking old sofa I'm sitting on. Yeah. Because, uh, really, I mean, I want to buy a new one. I, I never liked it, but since you brought it, I, I never liked it. So let's make a scene about the sofa. In about our film. About the sofa? Yeah. How does it belong to the film? Uh, it belongs to the film. <laughs> of course it belongs to the film. Because? Because it's uh, your old communist ideology or idea that when you bring something nice and new and expensive and the designer, uh, it's capitalist and uh, it's not nice. You're still stuck in these ideas it's that oh, what you what have I, to keep in your house is old about. and... It's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking in a different way, that we have to save some money just uh, for, we say it in Arabic, uh, for the black days. Yeah, the because black days. All, always we are sitting in a volcano. You don't know what will happen. So instead of spending this money for Oh, fucking sofa. Let's uh, keep this and it's enough now. It's not enough. I hate it. I've always hated it. It's ugly and it's... Uh... Okay. <sighs> what kind of design is this? It's anti-design. No, I like it because it's, it's made mm -hmm. from wood. You can have tables from wood and uh, whatever from wood. Why the sofa it has been to be from wood? And anyway, we're living now. I mean, always we must think that our future is black and maybe everything will get destroyed. I'm living now. I want to enjoy my life now. Uh, okay. You think that I'm not enjoying my life? It seems no, with all the ugly stuff like that. I don't feel that if we change the sofa that we will enjoy in our life. I throw some of them. Uh, now I don't uh, feel good because I make it. Because it's not the problem with the books itself. The books, uh, you can read it, you can believe in it or not. You can uh, agree with the writer or not. But uh, I throw it maybe because uh, so many reasons. Uh, first of all, because maybe the idea I was believed uh, for a long, long time, it didn't succeed. And I think uh, maybe it's a reaction about all these books that uh, I was believing in it because uh, uh, the idea itself didn't work. Put them back. Can you help me, please? Yeah. I don't know. 
don't know if I will find a place for it. You have to throw away Lynn. <laughs> Later on. <laughs> what kind of... Uh, what? What is it anyway? It's about Lenin. It's a chosen, chosen uh, things from what he wrote. Uh -huh. yeah. And this one, I think I know him, Karl Those Marx. Those are the memory of Marx and... and Karl Marx. English. And this one? Uh, about the military forces of the Soviet Union. Mm. Can you read it? Your big fat Bible. <laughs> There's no space for it. <laughs> Let me take There's no space. Away some? No, no, leave it. This? No. Yeah. And I think this dictionary. Is Have a look up. Uh, yeah. what's, what's, what's written here? Please. It's allowed to the comrades to read this book. Mm -hmm. And then they have to return it back. OK. And <laughs> that means. You had one book for how many no, hundreds? No, 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 no. Not, not this idea. The idea is which allow you to read and which not. Oh, okay. Another Bible, <laughs> secret one. No, no, it's about the about what? local communism. Okay. And the uh, Arabs and the battle of the Arabs. Arab nationalism. Nationalism. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. It's a big issue, this one. Big okay, issue. you have to react. <laughs> yeah, and I don't no know what it is. We react here, I think. I'm she. It's the big things. If you, the people, they see, they will make like this. Yeah. If you don't, um, you don't me, feel that, it will, that you react. For, it's for to me. allow you to read this book or not to allow you to read this oh, book. Okay. okay? <laughs> it's a big thing. They are controlling you, your way of thinking. <laughs> And it means nothing for you, no. and you are asking me to change the sofa? <laughs> this is the main important thing? It means nothing, really, it means nothing. Because mm. we had, we were living in freedom and democracy. And yes, so. that's why you must be surprised about that. At least. How important it could be, you know? It doesn't well, import, I don't mean this all the yeah, shit. Yeah, I know, okay, but I some... Mean, I mean what's written on this... Who is allowed and who is not I allowed? Don't know. Why I is it remember. such a big it's secret? Anyway, it went away, this part of it. I don't know who. You see. When looking back at our lives, it becomes clear that the Cold War had a big impact on both Ziad's and my own life. While Ziad was getting a military education in Moscow, I was living in West Germany. We were afraid of the Russians, and we were afraid of their nuclear weapons pointing at us. The Soviets were sending weapons to the Communist Party in Lebanon. In West Germany, the Americans stationed nuclear missiles next to my hometown. In Lebanon, the Communists were fighting a conventional war on the ground. In Germany, we were afraid of a nuclear war. Ziad had become a fighter. I had joined the peace movement. The Cold War had left its footprints on our lives, but the Cold War threw us at opposite directions. Wow, look at the statue. <laughs> yes. The struggle, <laughs> the class struggle. <laughs> Maybe all the statues in the Soviet age looks like the they same. Look the I, same. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, you know he's not. Lenin, yeah. he look uh, different this one. face. Yeah, and different face, weird. and he look uh, younger, yeah. a little bit. He looks angry. Uh -huh. No. No, he's serious. Serious. <laughs> okay. I think he looks angry. <laughs> And look what's written here. Rot front. You know what that means? Yeah. The red front. Red front. <laughs> uh, we were so afraid. His, from, uh, we were so afraid in the West from the red front. Who is this? It's Ernst. Ernst Thälmann. Ernst Thälmann. Uh. He's German. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about him actually, except for the name. You know, I remember when I was in uh, 17 years old. Yeah. Um, 
I visited uh, Moscow for the first time yeah. in 1976. And I was happy actually uh, when they told us that we have to visit uh, Lenin's grave. Yeah. So we went and we wait for hours and hours in very long line for several kilometers actually. Oof. Um, to, visit to, have, to have a chance to visit uh, Lini, but I surprised actually after we go in that he's so short and he make a big effect in the world. Well, of course, if you have those giant statues, you will even if he has a normal size, you will be shocked that he's small when you have such giant statues. So anyway, that's one of the reason why the Soviet they broke down. Why? Uh, because they deal, as I was dealing also, with the, with the ideas as a saint, even, the, even though the Marxism, Leninism, they don't believe in saints, but we deal with the ideas as a religion. And Lenin was your saint? Uh, somehow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We continued our search for Lenin. There were no more statues of him in Berlin except for one. It had been made for a movie. Now Lenin is standing in the backyard of a capitalist, privately owned company. Yeah, look, here he is. Let me see yours. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> At least it's not his relative. <laughs> you know, they look uh, like each other. Yeah, this time they it's the real the same, one. <laughs> yeah, they have the same iron face. <laughs> that yeah, he looks very serious. They look both of them serious. <laughs> uh. Hello, Lenin. <laughs> this one didn't shave, at least. Yeah. yeah. It's the same statues used in uh, Bye Bye Lenin, the film Bye Bye Lenin. Goodbye Lenin. Ah, Goodbye Lenin, yeah, it's Bye Bye Lenin. Yeah. That's what left of socialism. <laughs> to Berlin in 1990, a few months after the wall had fallen down. Having come from a conservative Catholic town in southern Germany, Berlin opened up a new world to me. For me, the East smelled differently from the West. People dressed differently, had different jokes. Berlin was fascinating. In East Berlin, there were illegal bars and squatted houses, techno clubs and former shelters, an artist's colony in an abandoned factory building. There was a culture of anarchy and freedom in the first years after the reunification. I loved the spirit of Berlin at that time. I watched naked actors in a dance theater. I got stoned on grass. I danced samba until dawn and got drunk on caipirinha. Berlin was techno, samba and Pink Floyd. In Berlin, I lived my own little revolution against anything conservative and narrow-minded. These first years after the reunification were wild. Then the German government moved to Berlin. It became all settled and very German. The spirit of anarchy had gone. When I was maybe 15, Years old, we crossed, we did a trip with the high school and we crossed East Germany to go to Poland. Before we crossed the checkpoint, our teachers, they warned us, don't speak anything. There are microphones everywhere, they are listening to what we say. Throw away all your newspapers and magazines because if they catch you, they will put you in jail. <laughs> so it was really, East Germany was so evil and we were so afraid. So for us, the system, it was... Uh, 
evil somehow. It deprived their citizens of moving around freely and uh, we felt for them it's a big prison. For me at that time it's a different way of thinking. It was, uh, the whole is built to separate between the evil and the good issues. Uh, so for me everything uh, good it was belonged to the East uh, Germany. And not and to the West. <laughs> Do you know what these are? No, yes, I know. I was hearing about them before, yeah. but I didn't see their, uh, I didn't saw their pictures. Now I can imagine how they are and who they are. I mean, uh, you just told me that uh, for you at that time, all the good values and good ideas. It was look, connected to the Christina, East, and we were it. like the bad guys in the yeah. West. But look, how can you say something like this? Let, let me tell you something. When they were shooting the people when they were crossing yes, the Yes, but let me tell you something. When you are stuck in, a, uh, in fundamental ideas uh, that you will see, at that time, I mean, you will see that there is no in, nothing in the middle. There is nothing gray, black or white, good or evil. So for me, at that time, I was thinking that those, they are mostly traitors. But when you look to Children. the... Yes, yes, look. that's what I want to tell you. Until 63. That's yeah. When I saw those, most, mostly they are children and youth and women. Uh, so, not because I saw them now, but because I released also that uh, there is a, another color. There is gray, not only black and white. Ziad still wanted to visit a bridge where spies had been exchanged between the East and the West. In 1989, the bridge was reopened to the normal public. In 1989, Germany was reunited. The Cold War was over. In 1989, the Lebanese Civil War had officially come to an end. Suddenly, just like that. That's the part of the green line. It's passing through this uh, road. In this divided city, I mean, were you able to pass from one side to the other? Or? No, of course, it's, uh, of course not. And uh, the only people that they can uh, cross the green line to the both sides. Mostly they were the commercials or the Red Cross or uh, the army, the Lebanese army. So uh, in general, it was uh, uh, not possible to everyone to cross. The date of, uh, of the end of the war, the civil war, uh, uh, they, we start to, uh, most of the people, they start to visit the other sites uh, just to see which kind of people they were fighting or which kind of people. Some of them, especially the youth, they were thinking that there is different shapes even. Uh, they uh, have image in their mind that they have different shapes. Monster or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they are totally different than the others. Now you can feel it, that uh, the invisible wall is start to continue, exist. Uh, in the same place, and um, actually, it's also it was it's now it's growing up more and more than before. While in Germany the reunification succeeded, in Lebanon the divisions between the parties and sects persisted. The wounds of a civil war don't heal easily, it seems. In the 1980s, I was demonstrating for peace in West Germany. In Lebanon, the civil war had become very complex and very dirty. Ziad was right in the middle of it, still being one of the most important military commanders of the Communist Party. I was on the Baisur for two years. The first time in the 1980s, the Israeli war, and the second time in 
كيف تعرفت عليها يعني بطريقة شوي دراماتيكية تقريبا بهذا اليوم إجا حدا يخبرني أنه في ضرورة أطلع على بيسور لأنه المسؤول اللي موجود ببيسور تصاوب بعتقد هذا اليوم كان أكثر يوم في مرء على هالمنطقة كان في أصف مدفعي بهالغزارة تعرفت أنا على زياد ب 83 بأيلول 83 هون على هيدي التلة يعني بأحلك الظروف تعرفت علي كان القائد العسكري والميداني هو هون لما كانت المنطقة عم تصفط وما في كثير مقاتلين حتى القيادة العسكرية كانوا أغلبهم أو استشهدوا أو تصاوبوا وطلعوا من المعركة فمع وصول زياد فينا نقول شوي يعني سير المعارك صار يتحسن أكثر لصالحنا يومتها كان يمكن كل السلاح عم يستعمل حتى البوارج البحرية نيوجيرسي فاتت بالمعركة الطيران الفرنسي وطيران لبناني لوكر هانتر نحن كنا محاصرين هون بالنص المنطقة عم تسقط إمكانيات عسكرية كانت ضئيلة وعم بتقل شوي شوي كان عنده نظرة غير ما نحن كنا بنشوف كان فعلا هو قائد عسكري وقائد ميداني بعرف لما وصل لهون وبلش يدير العمليات ووجه المدفعية لنا مدفعية الإسناد حسينا إنه إنه آه إيه الحرب مش لعبة مثل ما كنا نحن ماشيين فيها هيدي التلة هي تلة استراتيجية فيما لو آه كان تم السيطرة عليها آه عمليا كانت الحرب الأهلية حطت أوزارها يعني حطت أوزارها لأنه كانت آه هيدي البقعة قادرة تأمن تواصل ما بين البقع آه بيروت الجنوب خط الجنوب تقريبا معظم ارجاء لبنان فكانت المهمه تبعيتنا هي الدفاع عن هالمنطقه مشان ما تصب لقينا هون اناني بيت بزعتاء بسنه 83 كانوا مجمدين يعني فهلا بعد في منهم هول الاناني You see the mouse, Christina? هون كانوا الشباب يناموا بهذه الغرفة. Who was fighting whom and why? I still find it hard to understand. Maybe even the Lebanese don't know why the civil war happened. But I can't get rid of the feeling that the longer the war was dragging on, the deeper Ziad was getting involved in the fighting among brothers. Why didn't he manage to quit the war? Maybe I'll never know the answer. When I came to Lebanon 10 years ago, its ruins fascinated me. I thought that each destroyed building bared a secret and told me the story of life and death. I discovered this destroyed palace in the Lebanese mountains. I found it imposing like a cathedral. A cathedral with the blessing of demons. Only by working on this film, I realized that Ziad was one of the persons responsible for the destruction of such buildings. Ziad had participated in the civil war from the very beginning until its very end. I wondered if there were still some memories haunting him until today. Ziad? Ziad, can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I uh, made a plan of the things that we still have to shoot for our film. Are you listening to me? Yes, yes. yes. So I think we still have to do some things in Beirut and in our house. And I was thinking uh, if we can go to the archive of the Communist Party. And I did some more research and I asked some people and uh, basically all of them, they asked me, will he speak about Tripoli? So I think there is something about Tripoli and I was wondering, or I think that we should go to Tripoli to shoot there. Please, uh, let's take uh, Tripoli away now. Uh, later on, maybe we'll shoot, but now let's uh, speak. Uh, we can shoot, you can shoot in uh, Lekhiam, in Beirut, in different places, but uh, leave uh, Tripoli. Uh, what? Right 
I told I you before, I don't why, want, why don't I, I told you before, I don't want to shoot in Tripoli. Why there is so many reasons, I and mean, at least one of these reasons that I feel stupid because I shared in this pattern. And so, so maybe it's good for you to speak and to let yeah, it go and to... I don't feel that it's r uh, the right timing now. I think there is no right time or wrong time. Now always we're making is, the film. Always no, there is right timing and bad but timing. But now we are making the film, not in five years. Yes, but we can speak about something else, not uh, about Tripoli. Something else, I mean, but what I knew, know from this battle, the only thing that I know from this battle is that uh, the biggest number of your comrades from the Communist Party, they died in this battle, so I think you should speak about it. Christina, let me tell you, maybe, maybe also this one of the big reasons that I don't want to speak about people. So leave it now. Let's, uh, okay, I mean, I'm not your psychologist, but uh, I want to know. <laughs> Even as your wife, I want I, to know. I, I you feel that you're hiding. Yes, uh, also, I'm not sick. So yeah, okay. please, I don't Maybe want... Maybe you are sick. I, 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 don't I, don't, I don't want are to Are you speak hiding about some secrets about it? I don't know what's going on. There is I feel secret. that there, there is, is some secrets. big secrets, I will not speak about the uh, other issue uh, even. So it's not so big difference for me. But this battle, exactly, I don't want to speak about it. At least not now. Okay? No, not Please. now, not now. No. Now we're making the film. Now, not later. الثورة القضية العدالة والمساواة مبادئ مبدأ دم الشهداء كان إذا واحد منا يحلف بدم الشهداء معناتها أكيد اللي عم بيقوله إنه ما عم بيكذب أكيد اللي عم بيقوله صح كنت تخيل كل شيء إلا إنه تخلص الأشياء بالطريقة كنا بنص المعركة قصف واقتحامات بعدين بيجينا أمر إنه نفوت على معمل الكلور بنفوت على معمل الكلور وبنتقدم وبينقصف المعمل وبيطش الكلور استشهدت عادة إنه المقاتلين عادة بيستشهدوا بالمعارك أنا ما كنت متخيل إنه أنا اللي حموت على طول كنت مفكر إنه الباقيين بيموتوا إلا أنا كنت فضل لو بلكي بستشهد على الحدود ضد الإسرائيلية أو أو ضد لحد مثلا لما وعيت إني استشهدت طلعت هيك حواليا ولا نقطة دم حطيت إيدي على راسي قلت إيه ولا نقطة دم يعني بكرة إذا حلفوا الرفاق إنه بدم الشهداء يعني أنا مش مشمول بهيدي الحلفية يعني أكيد ما حيحلفوا إنه وحياة الشهداء اللي راحوا بالكلور طويلة و... ومش م... مش ما لها معنى يعني. سخت حظي. هلا هون يفترض يكون في قماش أسود ما هيك حتى يغطي الجرين هيك لأنه ما في أحسن ما يبين هول بس تيبين هذا الكاد تبع الصورة. أسود من هون الصورة وبيمشي الحال سخطة حظي حتى صورتي ما أخذت حقها استشهدنا كتار وشيعونا بالجملة ونقولي هيدي الصورة لو كنت عارفين إنه حأستشهد كنت بتصور صورة خصوصي بغير تياب بالبدلة مثلا انطلست صوري كلها على الحيطان تاني نهار الصورة اللي ما نقامت تلزق فوقها صور مرشحين في خضر رقصات دعيات شتر اتنين كلت ببلاج صرت تدور بهالمدينة الوفية بلكي بلاقي لي شي صورة لقلب شي زاوية صورة وحدة ولا هو حتى بالحزم ما بقى لي صورة صورة الوحدة اللي بقيت هي بالبيت عند أمي بس السنة الماضية شالت اسم الحزب عن الصورة بقيت هي صورة الماما أخوذة منيح كسخت الكلور شو بيمحي قال هون لازم توقع الوردة عاملين لها طريقة أنا تفك يعني لوحدها بس هلا إنه حنزلها هيك هاي معناتها إنه كيس سخط وحظه توقع فين إن 
Do you feel that uh, you saved or you destroyed Beirut? Uh, since we love the city so much, so uh, somehow we hijacked Beirut. لأنه حبينا بيروت هالقد إمنا بخطفة إيه إمنا بخطفة لحتى نحتفظ فيها لحالنا بعتقد إنه كل واحد من مقاتلي الأحزاب التاني والأطراف المختلفة بنفس الطريقة تعاطى مع بيروت وبما إنه الحبيبة مش ممكن تكون إلا لواحد أو جهة واحدة فصار تقطيعة وتدميرة الأولاد تربوا بيون بطل وبطل ومناضل وصادق ما بيتنازل ما بيبيع حاله لحدا وما بيغير قناعاته وتربوا انه هن يناقشوه يناقشوه بكل حرية ويحترموه لأنه أنا ولا مرة ما احترمته لزياد ولا مرة شفته بس رجال ومرة على طول كنت شوفه هيدا البطل يعني اللي بنظري انا لو زياد استشهد بالحرب كان بالنسبه للشباب اللي عرفهم واللي اشتغل هو اياهم تشيجيفارا وفي شباب قالوا لي اياها عندهم زياد تشيجيفارا جيفارا مات جيفارا مات جيفارا مات After the Lebanese civil war was over, Ziad and Muna got divorced. He had to adapt to a life as a civilian. He had to become someone normal. Dirt Amel Fossil, in the Harb and Tahit, Ila Gair Raja. بتمنى يكون لغير رجعة وبشتغل من من مشان ما تت ما تتكرر وأنا عم بشتغل بهذا الميدان بس يعني هل كان طموحي إنه يكون موظف وروح أمضي الصبح وأقضي على شيء ما كان هذا طموحي ولكن إذا كان هذه هي الوسيلة اللي بتدخلني بحياة الاجتماعية وبالحياة المدنية ما في خيارات أخرى فهي وسيلة يعني بدي أتقبل But was the war really over? In 2005, Lebanese Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri got assassinated. Anger dominated over fear. And the assassination was more than most of the Lebanese were willing to accept. They took to the streets, thousands of them, and got together for a peaceful uprising, demanding the end of Syrian control over Lebanon. Ziad was very enthusiastic about this new peaceful movement. For the first time in his life, he participated in a peaceful struggle for a free, independent country and helped to organize this campaign of civil disobedience. Every night he went down to Martyr Square to demonstrate. I reported about the sit-ins for German TV. On the 14th of March, about one and a half million Lebanese demonstrated peacefully for the pull-out of the Syrian army and its security sector from Lebanon. The atmosphere was great. Although I wasn't Lebanese, this day was one of the happiest days of my life. The Syrian army pulled out soon after, but the Lebanese had to pay a high price for this newly gained independence. In June 2005, Ziad's political companion and friend Samir Kassir got killed by a car bomb. Until now, we don't find words for our anger and our grief. He's a big loss. And yet a few weeks later, Ziad's wartime comrade George Hawi, the leader of the Communist Party, got assassinated. Our joy over the Lebanese uprising had lasted very shortly. Lebanon was thrown back into the black days again, it seemed.
I still remember the smile on the face of Samir Kassir at that time. And he said to me, look, the people in the streets, they have a different target than the leaders on the presidium. So on they the will be they will be on the stage. They will be uh, disappointed after a while. He said. He said. Yeah. So I was as, disappointed. You were not yeah. disappointed. For me, because I know, because uh, for me, I you know, uh, I know uh, the quality and uh, our, their targets. Their targets, it's. But different. you gave your heart, you yes, went down yes. every day, and every night, did, you spent yes, almost what every we did, night there. What we did, uh, what we did it's a uh, great thing. Uh, we have more or less, it's free from uh, our country, it starts to be free from the direct control of the Syrian army, mm. which is not a small thing. That's why we still pay uh, prices for that, what we did. So that means it's very big. Um, to have independent country, uh, you have to pay for it. And that's why we are pay, uh, paying for it until now. Ziad continued to fight for his political aims in a peaceful way. In 2009, he worked in the election campaign against Hezbollah and their allies. They won over Hezbollah in the elections, but on the ground nothing changed. Things were getting worse and worse. Hello. Actually, it's the fifth time I share in the election in, the, in Lebanon. Uh, but this election, actually, it's, it's different. Uh, totally different because it will lead you. Uh, the result it will lead you to which country you will live in. Uh, for my side, it's a final decision I took, and I'm, I'm sure I will make it. Uh, if the opposition they win, I will not stay in this uh, country because can you imagine that to collect in one hand the weapons and the power, the legal power, I am sure the result will not be like that yani, from the other side. I can tell you that we win. Now they close the, all the, how you say it, the boxes? They close it at 7 o'clock, exactly before uh, 10 minutes. And I am sure that we win. I often thought of leaving Lebanon, and Ziad kept on telling me to move away from our area. Whenever he stepped out of our home, he crossed an invisible ideological borderline. On my birthday, the 7th of May 2008, the past was catching up with the present. Hezbollah and their allied troops invaded Beirut. On the neighboring building, a crazy gunman was shooting. <laughs> Ziad made us leave Beirut. He stayed. Carla and me spent time on a beautiful empty beach seeing smoke over Beirut and hearing gunfire. It was very strange. I got a notion of how life must have been for Muna in war times as a single mother. It was war again. But this time, Ziad wasn't fighting. Yeah. 
Yani kalem ni ha ana mış mı? Kalem ni ha anti mış mı yani? Eee ande hek şöyle stres. Ana fişi ismi zero stres. Oh hay da mı? Zero stres ok. Ma kum bati şuna şizofreni ba? No ati ni şuna şizofreni. Ano bu hay da al balad yani. واحد بدل مجنون بس كلهم هول بالاخر شيء بده يصير يطلع على شيء زفريني despite of all conflicts we want to stay in Lebanon and we try to live a normal life Carla is happy here After the mini-civil war in May 2008, Ziad and I got involved in peace projects with Lebanese youth. Thank <laughs> فكان في طفل على حدود أربع خمس سنين تقريبا عمره كان بس نمرق من حد البيت يصير يحكي معنا أو أو نحكي معه فأحد المرات كنا مرئين وأنا تحديدا كنت ماري و... وكفينا الطريق من حد منه بدون ما نحكي معه وعلى ما يبدو أنه أهله ما كانوا من تمهنده فلحقنا ركض ورانا فسمعنا يعني رصاصة الناس وبعدها اكتشفت أنه هاي الطفل كان لحقنا كان ورانا ونصابه ومات مرة كان في أميرة برنسيسة اسمها كارلا راحت على الغابة وصارت تتمشى بالغابة تمشي شوي 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 صار الليل والبرنسيسة صغيرة صارت تطلع شمال يمين شمال يمين ما كانت تعرف الطريق دائما في شعور عندي انه انا مسؤول عن عن موته لو ما مرقت من هالطريق يعني ما كي لو ما كنا نحكي معه كل مرة وقت اللي نمره يمكن ما مات ما كان في أمر ما كان في مون إيه ما كان تعرف ترجع على البيت وبعدين كان في بيك ستار كارلا ستار بيك وان فهيدي الكارلا ستار صارت تطلع فيها وإن كان خفت الأحلام بشكل عام بس انه حتى بالحلم اليومي اللي ممكن يمرق على راسي انه بشوف صوره الطفل هو وعم بيتقرنص ومثل ما بشوف صوره دائما يعني بالحلم انه في دبابه مصوب المدفع باتجاهنا وانا عم حامل البي سبعه وعم بضرب دبابه فهي الصوره الوحيده اللي بتتكرر معي على طول بالحلم على اليمين في صخره كبيره تحت فوق منا في شجرتين ثلاث شجرات او شجرتين تحت من تحت الشجرتين في صخره كبيره شوي مزبوط يعني يعني شي بيخري ما غبري ها هي واحدة عم تضرب لحظة شوي على هيدي هيدي هي هيدي هي 
جحالة جحالة أنا استعملت سلاحي آخر مرة من خمس دقائق <تصفيق> من شي من شي آخر مرة وقت تقرر وقف الحرب الأهلية سنة 89 بعد اتفاق الطائف اعتبرت أنه هذا المنقذ اللي شالنا من الحرب العباسية اللي كان رأيي فيها حتى قبل قبل وقفة كانت حرب عباسية وافترضت أنه ما رح نرجع نستخدمه لحد هلا محافظ أنه ما نستخدمه بس ما بعرف إذا شو الظروف اللي ممكن تنشأ وتخلي الواحد تحت عنوان الدفاع عن النفس يرجع يستخدمه ما ما بقدر أقول بالحرب آخر مرة استخدمت سلاح فيها تسعين تسعة وثمانين تسعين كان عون فل يعني على فرنسا وقفت الحرب ما عادش استعملنا سلاح إجا أمر إنه خلصت الحرب ما بعرف كيف الشمعة طفت كيف ما حدا بيعرف ضبيت السلاح مش أنا أنا وغيري يعني كلنا ضبينا سلاحنا وخلص قعدنا بالبيوت أنا بشوف إذا الواحد بيتعرض لمسألة يعني وجود يعني بيتعرض وجوده لخطر ممكن يرجع يستعمل سلاح ممكن أكيد سلاح موجود بس هيدا ما عادش طموح يعني هيدا عم بقول أنا من باب الدفاع الوجود ممكن نستعمل سلاح